When he debuted as an understated, sturdy, featured babyface jock in the spring of 2002, it was unclear to fans what Randy Orton was going to become throughout his lifetime as a WWE performer. His initial presentation was cookie cutter and vanilla, but that would soon change in ways that few would have guessed. Over the past decade and a half, Orton would become an arrogant blue chipper of privilege, an aggressive iconoclast, a familial alpha male, a full-blown psychopath, and a no-frills wrestler's wrestler. The face stays the same, but the composition of Orton has demonstrated great range. Just as few would have accurately projected Orton's slew of personae, even fewer may have predicted that his resume would be steeped with both high-profile victories and an array of gold that outweighs most of his WWE peers. Whether you love him or you hate him or you don't really care for him but find much joy in the whole RKO out of nowhere meme, you can't deny Orton's effectiveness and endurance as an overall performer. We've learned much about Randall Keith Orton through his evolution, his 16 plus years of building a memorable legacy for himself, and we here at Cultaholic don't have to burst from out of nowhere in order to give you the scoop on WWE's Apex Predator. I'm Sam from Cultaholic.com and here are 10 things you didn't know about Randy Orton. Join us. Number 10, words of advice. Orton joins both Bray Wyatt and The Rock to comprise the only three third generation wrestlers to have held the WWE Championship. Orton, of course, is the grandson of 50s and 60s star Bob Orton Sr. and the son of WWE Hall of Famer cowboy Bob Orton, who would back his boy in a 2005 feud with The Undertaker. Like Randy, cowboy Bob was regarded as an absolute natural inside the ring, as well as one of the most underappreciated technicians of his era. Though cowboy would have a hand in teaching his oldest child the wrestling ropes beginning in the late 90s, he and Randy's mother Elaine tried to discourage Orton from pursuing a wrestling career. Cowboy warned his son that a wrestler's life meant extended time away from his family, a hardship that both he and his wife understood firsthand from different perspectives. But Randy could not be deterred and would make his in-ring debut in March 2000. Number 9. Paying his dues Though he would become Intercontinental Champion within two years of his main roster WWE debut while feuding with Mick Foley and being groomed for greatness by on-screen mentors Triple H and Ric Flair, Orton's debut into the business meant that he had to start in the same place as virtually everybody else, right? At the very bottom. Before signing a developmental deal with WWE in 2001, Orton worked many independent events in the St. Louis area and not always as a wrestler. One of the company's regulars was former 1980s WWE undercarder Barry O, who just so happened to be Randy's uncle and the younger brother of Cowboy Bob. You can probably guess what the O in Barry O stands for. Having strong family connections like those that Randy had would ultimately help shape his wrestling acumen during his formative years. Number 8. Like father, like son Though the shattering of kayfabe would dilute its effectiveness and influence, the long-running Pro Wrestling Illustrated maintains a cult following to this day and still features year-end awards that highlight the best in wrestling of the prior 12 months. It wouldn't take long for Orton to earn recognition by PWI's readership and his honour would have an appropriate parallel. In 2001, Orton was voted P PWI Rookie of the Year, beating out Brock Lesnar and John Cena for the honor. 29 years earlier, in 1972, Cowboy Bob Orton won the same rookie honors, tying with WWE tag team stalwart Tony Gurria to share the award for that year. The two made for the first father-offspring duo to win the award too, which would later be matched by Larry Zbyszko in 1974 and Son Tim in 2013, and Ric Flair in 1975 and Charlotte in 2014. Number 7. Sick Burn For more than a decade, Orton has been identified with his theme song Voices, a slow-paced bit of melodic tension that advocates nihilism and abhors corruption. It's the song that comes to mind first when we think of The Viper, though it wasn't his first theme song in WWE. In between Motorhead and Rich Lutzi's wailing vocals was Burn In My Light, performed by rock band Mercy Drive, who had previously done Maven's entrance music. You remember Burn, don't you? That song couldn't have enough hay in it, could it? While Burn In My Light was subjectively upbeat and catchy, it doesn't fit the best version of Orton, which is the deranged sociopath that we all know. And Orton himself hated burning my light, making that feeling abundantly clear in a 2008 interview. Orton would say in part, I hated that bleep for all four years. I hated it from the first day I heard it. They even tried to tweak it a bit and I still hated it. Apparently, Orton would have forgone Jeff Hardy's earlobes and just stuck that screwdriver in his own ear canal if he ever had to hear the song again. Number six, stretched beyond limits. Throughout his lengthy WWE tenure, Orton has found himself on the mend from numerous injuries, particularly to his 
arms and shoulders. In 2010, Orton gained a little bit of infamy when he dislocated his shoulder whilst punching the canvas to set up his RKO. Perhaps more freaky, a few years back, Orton dislocated his shoulder once more, this time while taking the garbage out to the end of his property for its weekly collection. In that instance, it reportedly took several hours for his shoulder to properly be popped back into place. Orton suffers from a condition called hypermobility, sometimes referred to as double jointedness, that severely affects his shoulders. People with hypermobility in their shoulders have limits on how much they can safely push, pull, and grasp heavy and sturdy objects. Hypermobility is actually considered a disability by the United States Social Security Administration, which makes it all the more impressive that Orton has had the career he's had, performing capably in matches for lengthy stretches of time continuously over many months and years. Number 5. Legend Spared In 2017, shortly before WrestleMania 33, Orton had another one of his brutally honest interview moments while speaking to Yahoo Sports about the forthcoming grand spectacle of wrestling. In said interview, Orton lamented the breaking of Undertaker's WrestleMania streak three years earlier at the hands of Brock Lesnar. Orton firmly believes, like many fans, that the streak should have endured forever and that no man should have put a smudge on it. And Orton would know because he was once in a position to end the streak himself. In 2005, young legend killer Orton was matched up with Undertaker at WrestleMania 21 and ended up becoming the streak's 13th victim after a competitive bout. But Orton was actually offered the opportunity to be the one to end it, as it would have absolutely legitimized a man whose entire career was predicated on destroying legends. As the story goes, Undertaker himself broached the idea to Orton, who refused it out of respect. And think of the ramifications of that decision if Orton agrees to do it, we would have never gotten the shocked Undertaker guy meme nine years later, so really, it worked out for everybody. Number four, memories out of nowhere. A list of Randy Orton facts cannot pass without paying homage to the move that spawned a viral video sensation, the RKO, specifically the RKO out of nowhere. The sudden jarringness that Orton can display when executing his leaping cutter is one of the most revered aspects of his total wrestling persona, and his many creative counters into the RKO have resonated deep into the WWE fanbase. But which RKO was Orton's all-time favorite? There are certainly many vivid images to choose from, but Orton's personal pick is the one he delivered to poor Evan Bourne, aka TNA's Matt Seidel, in 2010. In the moment, the agile Bourne attempts his airborne shooting star press onto a prone Orton, but when Bourne straightens out for the splash, Orton regains just enough verticality to snag him out of midair and plunge him down with the RKO. Orton cited the challenge of getting the timing just right right as the reason why it's his favorite one, and certainly a top pick of many viewers. Number 3. Predator at the Apex from the time that 24-year-old Orton became the youngest world champion of any sort under the WWE banner, there will be more gold waiting for him, most of them of the big belt variety. Between August 2004 and March 2017, Orton would win the WWE Championship on nine different occasions and the World Heavyweight title four times, for a grand total of 13 different reigns as a world champion of some sort. Looking solely at his title reigns that occurred under WWE's jurisdiction, Orton's 13 reigns are the third most world title titles won in the company. Ahead of him are two men that he would battle in numerous world title matches over the years, Triple H with 14 and John Cena with 16. Orton's nine WWE Championship reigns are tied for second most in company history with Triple H, behind only Cena's 13. But Orton has one thing over those two. He is the only one of the three that ever won the WWE Championship, despite there being projected images of creepy crawlies on the canvas. Top that, John! Number 2. Ultimate Survivor One of the first landmark wins of Randy Orton's career came at the 2003 Survivor Series, when he was the sole survivor of a dramatic elimination match, pinning Shawn Michaels in order to cost Steve Austin his co-GM title. It wouldn't be Orton's last successful foray into WWE's November Classic, as more success would follow in the immediate future. In all, Randy Orton holds the record for most times survived in Survivor Series elimination matches. Five times in all. Orton would be the sole 
survivor of his matches at the 2004 and 2005 shows as well. He survived alongside Cody Rhodes in 2008 and with Bray Wyatt in 2016 to set the new record, passing Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warriors for survivals apiece. Additional fun fact, prior to 2016, Autumn was on the losing end of four other Survivor Series eliminators and was the last man eliminated in each. His participation in the 2017 Raw vs SmackDown match is the only time in 10 elimination match appearances that Orton 1 didn't survive and 2 wasn't the last man to go. So yeah, Randy Orton is really good at this Survivor Series thing, guys. And number 1, Rumbling Randy. Only 7 men can claim to have won multiple Royal Rumbles and Orton counts among them the winner of the 2009 and 2017 bouts. The exclusive group consists of fellow two-time winners Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, Batista, Triple H and John Cena and three-timer Stone Cold Steve Austin. But as far as Rumble greatness goes, Orton is also part of an even more exclusive group, owed in part to his longevity with the company. Orton is one of just two individuals that have been in a Royal Rumble Final Four on exactly six occasions, the most of any wrestler. In addition to Orton's two Rumble victories, he also made it to the final quartet in 2006, 2007, 2011 and 2012. The only other wrestler with exactly as many is Glenn Jacobs, who did so five times as Kane and once as the fake Diesel, though has never won the heavily anticipated match. Six other wrestlers have made five Final Fours, Cena, Triple H, Batista, Michaels, Austin and Roman Reigns, but Orton remains a cut above. And that's our list. I'm Sam from Cultaholic.com. You can follow me on Twitter here. You can follow all of us at Cultaholic. If you like what we do here at Cultaholic, you can check us out on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And don't ever forget, no matter what you do, do not forget to hit subscribe and join us.